Welcome to the video creation of my first project at 2, the mechanical pegging ring, created by myself, Jake Doyle. We will first dive into the project plan in Excel. So this very first page is a brief overview of the process as a whole. So it includes a brief description of the project, the project plan, environmental concerns, system power, scan time, high speed requirements, even though we don't have those, and the network protocol. We will skip over the conceptual drawing for now and show that in a minute. We'll move on to the parts list. So for our parts list here, we have the preferred vendor first, and then we break this up into sections. So our first section is the power supply. Second is the input devices with all of our sensors. Next we have the output devices, the PLC for the processing unit, the point AO Ethernet switch, the safety relay, some enclosures and other miscellaneous devices. I'll scroll back up to the top here. So we also provide the signal for every input and output device and everything else involved. The amp limiter draw, part number, the company name with a link to the website, along with some specifications for the parts and a link to the part itself. Now we will move on to the IO map for our inputs. So here, we broke these kind of up into sections as you can kind of tell. We have the e-stop and both push buttons along with the capacitive sensor. And then we have a group of our photo eyes. And lastly, our inductive proc sensors. There are also some comments provided on the inputs along with the types, the device itself, where they are located within the project along with the factory top tag. We'll scroll down here and we can also see that we've included our analog channel the scaling we used in our project, some one shots, along with some bits that are also included in our program. We'll move on to the outputs here. Kind of the same setup here. So we have our address, our outputs broken up into solenoids, conveyors, and then the lights. We have our bits. We've also included comments, type, device, the location, and the factory talk tag. So now we'll move on to the timers and counters. As you can see here we have quite a bit of timers, our watchdog timers as well and our counters for the products. And we will move on to the bill of materials. So the bill of materials here first provides a picture of the part we're using itself, the part, the part number, the quantity of parts, the price of each part, and the total price along with a link to the part where we can purchase the product. So we'll scroll down here, kind of catch a glimpse of all the different pieces of equipment and parts we use within our process. Scroll down to the very bottom. You can see that our total number there is a pretty hefty number. Now move on to the materials list. So same thing here with the materials list. We have the wire, picture of it itself, the material, the quantity that we use, the color, and along with some specs. So in here we have some raceways, some jumpers, din rail, screws, and the wire itself. I'll now head back to the conceptual drawing. Zoom out here. So I used a picture of the process itself and I kind of added some descriptions. So you can see here it's broken up into about roughly five different sections. So starting with the loading station, here is where the metal pegs and the plastic rings are loaded. And you have the sorting station where they're separated from each other depending on the material, what they are. So you can see here that the metal pegs will go down that chute and the plastic rings will be sorted by a sort solenoid down that chute. And then we'll move to the assembly station. So at this station here, this is where the two components meet. So there, the plastic ring will be trusted down that chute. And then the rotary solenoid will actuate. The metal peg will come along, hit that ring. It'll then move on to the checking station. Here at the checking station, it is verified that both components are within the assembled product. So there's a capacitive sensor there and an inductive proc sensor. And then it moves to the analog gauge where the diameter of the metal peg is checked. If that is no good, it is rejected. If the diameter is acceptable, it'll bypass the reject station. So here at the reject station, if there are not both components included in the final product, it'll be rejected. If the diameter is not acceptable, it'll also be rejected. And lastly, we have the accepted tray here. So this is where the accepted products go. And there's roughly five products that can fit within this tray until it is full and has to be emptied. And that wraps up our drawing and how everything works. 
Now we will move on to the mechanical CAD drawing. So here you can see this is how the project is physically laid out. You can see roughly a majority of the components involved. So here we have the bins and everything else that makes up the conveyor system. Sensor overhangs, some chutes. We'll move on. We have the point I.O., power supply, some raceways, terminal blocks, more raceways, safety relays, some more terminal blocks, thin rail. We have our ice cube relays, some more raceway, terminal block, and lastly, our indicator lights and our push button enclosures. So now we'll move on to the electrical drawing. So we'll first start with the power circuit here. So you can see the incoming power going to the outlet and the light, creating the power supply and then powering the rest of our components. And we'll move down to the safety circuit. So you have the safety circuit here. Two control relays, cutting power to off outputs. And we'll go up to the input ladders here. I kind of have these broken up, like my I.O. map. You have your push buttons, control relay, and the capacitive sensor at the bottom. Then we'll move on to our photo eyes and our inductive prox sensors and then our output ladders. So first we start with our solenoids, then we have our conveyors, then the lights. Down here we have our analog gauge along with the wiring diagram and wording. There's also two components that break off into two separate ladders. So the inductive proc sensor and another solenoid. And lastly, we have a picture of the ice cube relays at the very bottom, showing the layout of the pins and the contacts. We'll now move on to a more in-depth view of the process. And then our owner's manual. Here with our owner's manual, we have step-by-step -step instruction. So first we start with the push buttons and how they work, basic functions, indicator lights, when they'll turn on. And then we'll start with the step-by-step -step instruction of the physical push buttons, along with the HMI operation. Then we'll move down to the actions of the HMI. So the screens, trending, alarms, inputs and outputs. They accept the peg size, our main screen, along with some logins and a couple notes for both processes. We will now take a brief look at a program. So for our program here, I have this broken up into four different subroutines. So first we have our main routine, basically our start stop, e stop, timers, watchdogs, our outputs, conveyors and such. More and more timers. We have our scaling. And then our jump to subroutines. So now we'll go to the constraints. So the constraints here basically sets constraints on the low and high acceptable ranges for the diameter of the metal pegs. So first we have the low. So we use less than and greater than instructions along with some moves. First two are low bits. And the last two are high. Move on to the counters. So counters, just like the name, Accepted, rejected in total, along with the reset timer to the counters. And lastly, we'll move on to the flip-flop subroutine. This here is two timers to make our e-stop light flash. Now that you have seen the project planning in the program itself, we'll move on to the components. So you can see that we have the incoming power hitting an outlet and a light switch, then powering our power supply, converting it to 24 volts DC, and that then powers the point AO top right, so that is our communication device from all the inputs and outputs included in our system to so the Compact Logix PLC in the other classroom. And at the very bottom, we have arguably the most important component of the process, our safety relay. Now we will dive in to the physical operation. So here, we're showing the different lights that turn on with the process. So there we're starting, stopping, as you can see with the illuminated lights. So the green light will be on when it's started. E stop is pressed, both the E stop and the stop light will turn on. E stop light will flash. Press the reset light, 
Me stop light will no longer be on. Start, green light, stop, red light. So here's a clip just demonstrating how the process works as a whole. So products are loaded up. They make their way down where they need to be. Sorted, assembled, checked at the analog sensor. Had a little hiccup there at the plastic rings, but it ended up working out. Once the tray is full with five accepted products, the blue light will illuminate. So here in this clip, I'm demonstrating emptying the full tray and then resetting the counters with the stop button. This next clip here demonstrates some fail routines. So first you see that there's just a plastic ring with no metal peg. That component then bypasses the checking station and is rejected. Here's a successful product. Both components are there, is checked and accepted. And there's a plastic ring stuck in the chute. So there will not be an accepted product here because it'll just be the metal ring. So it'll be detected that there is no plastic ring there. It will not be checked, it'll just be rejected. I will now show operation from the HMI. So here we have our main screen. We'll log in here as supervisor so we can get the full experience. So user, username is supervisor with a capital S. Type that in here. And our password being capital S UP Then log in here. We will now see everything on the main screen. So we have our indicator lights and our push buttons to start with. So we'll start the system from our HMI. We'll stop the system. We'll hit the physical e-stop. E-stop light will flash. Once we physically clear the e-stop and press the physical reset button, our e-stop will no longer flash. Now we will move on to the accepted peg size range. We can see here for our low, we can go down all the way to 1.15 inches, but anything below that will not be accepted due to constraints. So we have to put in an acceptable amount or diameter, I should say. So 1.17, same thing with our high. If we go too high, It'll be rejected, so we'll enter 1.32 back into here. So at the moment, every diameter available is being accepted, just to kind of demonstrate what's going on. So we'll go through the pages here. So we have our trending page. So here is basically the difference in the low and high acceptable diameters. The alarms page, nothing there as of right now, or inputs. You can see that those inputs are false, so they're illuminating red, and the ones that are true are illuminating green. Outputs, same story. Nothing is on right now currently, so those are off. We'll go back to our main screen, hit the start button, run through some physical operation. So as the system is running, we can check our inputs. See that inputs are coming true and false. Same thing with our outputs. Both conveyors are on. Once the solenoids fire, they'll become true. If we head back to our main page, we can see that the counters have increased at the top left, are accepted, rejected in total. And at the bottom, for our accepted peg size range, we can see that the measure diameter will change here. So here you can briefly see that the measure diameter falls within the range, which is then accepted. So 
Once five total components have been accepted, an alarm will pop up like this, telling you to clear the tray and reset. You can head back to the main page. The full light will be illuminated. The stop light will also be illuminated. You will not be able to start the process. Once the product has been cleared from the tray, you can reset from the HMI by holding the reset button for two seconds. I will now show the different logins. So we can log out here from our supervisor credentials. We can log in as the janitor. And the screen should not change because we don't want the janitor being able to start or stop the system. So we'll log in here as the operator. There's a big difference here. We will see nearly everything that the supervisor sees except the accepted range. So our trans alarms, inputs, outputs, and main page will all be the same. And lastly, our supervisor here, as shown in the beginning, everything will be the same as the operator, except except its peg size range will show at the bottom left, like so. And lastly, to wrap up this video, I will briefly go over the final summary. So here I included basically the process as a whole, some obstacles I encountered, and what I did to overcome those obstacles, and overall what I thought of the project itself. So here for my what went well and needs improvement list, I guess the big thing here is I thought what went well was my HMI design. I actually really enjoyed designing that, the layout. And another thing would be the scaling for my analog gauge. After a few answered questions, I was better able to understand that. For my needs improvement, there was a lot of things I learned throughout this process, but I think the biggest takeaway would definitely be that I need to work on my time management and stay focused early on in the project. And that concludes my first project video. Thanks for watching.